Barry Bryson here. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. We are continuing our study of the Gospel of Matthew, and we're still looking at Matthew chapter 26, verses 20, 36 through 46. Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. He took with him Peter, James, and John, the two sons of Zebedee. Um, James will be the first apostle to die. We read about that in the book of Acts. Um, Peter will die. Um, in the aftermath of the burning of Rome in AD 63. Um, and he and Paul will die fairly close to each other. John will survive to the end of the century to be a very, very old man. And it seems that he will die on the, uh, on the slave island of Patmos uh, as a quarry slave there at the end of his life. The Romans will be working him to death, literally in the quarries on the island of Patmos. But before that happens, you'll have the vision that will be communicated in the book of Revelation. Why these three? I don't know, other than that they, they were the ones closest to him. And there's nothing wrong with that. He took them to the Mount of Transfiguration. He took them to, to raise Jairus's daughter from the dead. I mean, he, he, he spent time with these three that he didn't spend time with the other eight or nine of the of the apostles excuse me um and where was andrew you know they were a foursome peter andrew james and john all partners and everything we know about andrew is wonderful and affirming but he's not there i don't i don't know the answer to that i do know this jesus wants them there and he wants them to stay awake if they can and i think it's because he doesn't want to be by himself in this moment um it's hard. It's just hard to see Jesus fall on his face and to plead not to have to go through with what he has to do to save us. And ultimately, the reason he does it is because it is his Father's will. It's not because his love for us is greater than his fear of the moment. It's because his love, obedience, duty towards the Father is greater than everything else. So that when he leaves this moment, he's resolute and, and, and he undergoes it. There's a great amount of calm that, that, that he has after, after this moment. The, the thing that he dreads is the cup. What is the cup? Well, you can get in your, um, pull out your, your Strong's or your Young's or your Cruden's, you know, look at the concordance in the back of your Bible, your Vines, I don't know. You can, well, not your Vines, because that's for the New Testament, but you can get out any of your concordances and, um, and look up the cup as it is used in the Old Testament prophets, and it is universally used to describe God's own wrath. Um, very much like the seven bowls of God's wrath that John will write about in the Revelation. I don't think Jesus is afraid of the physical pain, although that had to, that's unimaginable what he's going to go through. It's, it, it, is, it is quite literally a tortured way to die. Um, I, think it's, I think it's carrying in his person on the cross the sins of all humanity. And experiencing in some way God's wrath for those sins um, during his time on the cross. Um, we'll talk about the way he dies, uh, the physical way he dies. Honestly, a, f a human physical body is not going to be up to the stress of what he has to undergo as they execute him on the cross, which is to bear in his one human body the guilt of the sins of all the world and to be fully aware of that guilt the way only God can be aware of that guilt. I think it is this which he dreads undergoing for the amount of time he'll have to undergo it. And it is this that he prays to avoid. And I wonder if when he says to the apostles there that can't stay awake, and I don't judge them for this, 
<clears throat> the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I wonder if he's talking about himself as well. That he, that he needs the support to undergo this because although the spirit is willing, the flesh itself is weak. I don't know. I do know that he repeats this prayer three times, as Matthew says, and there's a difference between the first prayer and the second in Matthew's gospel. You know, there's an if this can't be, <laughs> then I, I know that I have to undergo this. But it should be sobering, even frightening to us, that when the moment came, as the roller coaster crested the hill and reached the point of no return, when things, events were going to just spiral, you know, they're just going to hurtle down into the abyss of what's about to happen. He wanted not to do it. And the reason he did it was because his determination to be obedient to his father. And sometimes for us, it comes down to that. We just have to do what we need to do to be obedient, whatever that is. Suck it up and do it. Or we're not going to be saved either ourselves. We're just not. And Jesus gives us that example in the Garden of Gethsemane. Well, we'll pick up with his arrest next time. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word.